Good morning, everybody. It is 9.02. Hey, we are almost perfectly on time. What do you think of that? I hope everybody's doing good this morning. And as we get ready to start services, let's go ahead and play a song and listen to a song to let everybody get ready. that weren't here when I said it the first time. Uh, let's go to our Lord with prayer. Dear 
Father God, we just thank you again for another day that we can be before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you do for us. Father, we want to just pray for everyone that has had any physical illnesses or anything throughout this week, that you would help them. Lord, you also know that we had a loss of one of our brothers that died in an accident, you know, Brian. And Lord, I hope he's with you now. And he that has gone out and doesn't have to suffer or anything like that anymore. We hate losing one of our brothers. We hate losing anybody. But if they go to be with you, it's a lot easier. So, Father, as we get ready to read from your word, Lord, I just ask that you'd send your Holy Spirit to minister through us. Father, just speak to everyone. Let them get something out of this. And we just thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, last week, you know, we briefly touched on what sanctification is. And I know that's a Christianese word, as my wife would say, but, you know, every now and again, we do use one. We, we try to keep, you know, use regular words. So, you know, you know, I just kind of want to touch base just a little bit on what we said. You know, we said last week, you know, that a lot of people think that they have to clean up their act to come to God. And you don't have to clean up your act to come to God. You clean up your act after you come to God. Does God want you to change? Yes, God wants us to change. He wants us to become better. He wants us to become like Jesus. But we don't start out that way. No, that's what we talked about last week. And coming to Jesus, receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior, by Him being our Savior, that's what justifies us. But you hear the word, you know, being sanctified, you know, sanctification. And what is that? Well, that's process. Sanctification is a process that happens in us. And it's a change. That's us changing to be more like what God... You know, let me just read what I got. This note right here that I got. <clears throat> Sanctification is the Holy Spirit's work of making us holy. God wants us to be holy. He doesn't want us to just be any old way. And it says, when the Holy Spirit creates faith in us, he renews us, he renews in us the image of God, so that through his power, okay, you got to remember this, through his power, we produce good works. Okay? So, like we said before, works do not get us into heaven. You can't work to get into heaven. You can't do good stuff. Our faith should produce good stuff, make us want to do good stuff. But that's not what actually gets us into heaven. So I just want to do a quick comparison. And I actually I swiped this out of a commentary I read because I really like this. The, you know, the difference between justification and sanctification. Okay, justification. Okay, that changes our legal standing in front of God. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are saved. That's it. And... It changes our legal standing. We are now forgiven for our sins. Sanctification, that's our internal condition. What are we like on the inside? That's not something that just changes all at once. Now, the legal standing is once and for all time. Once you're saved, you're saved. You don't get saved this week, and then next week you have to get saved again, and next week you have to get saved again. No, once you're saved, you're saved. Where sanctification, that continues throughout our, throughout our whole life. We should become more and more like Jesus as we go through life. Justification also is entirely God's work. God calls us, and if we answer the call, he saves us. We're born again. As I used to hear, hear that term a lot back in the old days. Well, you're born again. A born-again Christian. <laughs> but 
It's entirely God's work. He's the one that saves us. Sanctification, we have to cooperate. It's still God doing it, but we have to cooperate. We have to allow him to change us, and we'll get more into that as we go through. Justification, again, that's perfect in his life. I mean, once you're saved, you're saved. It's perfection. Boom. Sanctification is not perfect in his life. Now, we still are going to mess up. We're not going to be perfect. As much as we want to be like Jesus, we're still going to mess up. And that's where forgiveness comes in. Hey, I'm so glad that we're forgiven. But we mess up. Okay, justification, that's the same in all Christians. You know, hey, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved. There is no maybe saved, kind of saved, sort of saved. And it's the same in every Christian. Sanctification, which again is our internal condition, is how much are we like Jesus in plain words. And it's greater in some people than it is in others. But we can't look down on people that are not where we are yet. You know, everybody is at a different level. It's like you're going up a ladder. And, you know, one guy might be on rung 10, and you might be on rung 2, or the other way around, or I might be on rung 11, or rung 4. We're all in a different place in our sanctification, but... We're all trying to be like Jesus, and we're going to become like Jesus. But like I said, it's greater in some people than it is in others. So, I'm just going to read that comment one more time that I wrote down here. Sanctification is the Holy Spirit's work of making us holy. When the Holy Spirit creates faith in us, he renews in us the image of God, because we're made in God's likeness, so the whole, you know, the Holy Spirit is trying to renew the image of God in us, so that through the, His power we can produce good works. He wants to make us like Jesus. So, but before, uh, and you know, just the, I know I some of this stuff I beat to death. I, I'm sorry about that, guys, but. We got to get this stuff in our mind. We really have to get it in our memory. That way, when we're out doing, you know, it just automatically happens. You know, it's like, uh, oh, compared, and I use the comparison to motocross a lot, you know, because a lot of us do that. And, you know, like, say you have to do this corner down here, and you practice this corner, and you do this corner over and over and over and over. You run into the same corner, hammer down, boom. And as you go into this corner, you know, the more and more you learn how to do this corner, after a while, it's second nature. You don't even think about it anymore. You know, you just, boom, you hit it, and down, down, down the track you go. And that's how it is with this stuff. You got to just remind yourself of it, remind yourself of it. That way it gets so in your brain. That way when something happens, it just automatically, you just automatically do what you're supposed to do or what you ought to do. A lot of times what you want to do and can't do, but you choose to do. So, but let's go on, you know, and again, you know, I want to read Ephesians 2.8. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And there's our justification. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. We didn't do it. God gave it to us as a gift. It's not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now, that's basically, that's the scripture verse that the above note that I read a little bit ago comes out of which God prepared in advance for us to do so okay so we know that once we're saved you know God would like us to do things hey he'd like us to go raise money for some people he'd like us to go do a motorcycle ride for somebody hey there, there's all these different things you know so will this make us perfect well I know 
what it does to us, but I'm going to let scripture tell us. First Kings, you know, it talks about, you know, when they sin against us, against us, for there is no one who does not sin, is what it says in 1 Kings 8.46. You go to Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 20. It says, indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. There it says it again. And then the third one, just to drive it home. 1 John 1.8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, as we become sanctified, we get closer and closer like Jesus. But it doesn't make, we're still not perfect. We are still not perfect but we will continue to get better and better. You know, and it's just like what I talked about, you know, on the racetrack, or you can talk about it on your street bike, you know. Hey, slow, slow maneuvering, slow corners, going around real slow corners or riding figure eights and stuff. You know, you watch some guy that just got his motorcycle and he's paddling his bike around the corner, you know, because he's just he's nervous and stuff. Then you watch some dude has been riding for 30 years, man. He just does these figure eights, does these U-turns and stuff. And it just almost becomes like second nature. And after a while, it is second nature. And that's the same thing here. You know, because we love our God, we should want to become more and more like Jesus. But, and it's no different with God calling us to be saved, you know, he does that. The same way God sanctifies us. It's not what we do. God is so great when you think about it. You know, he asks us to do stuff, but he never expects for us to be able to do it. He's always there to help us do it. And you're like, yeah, really? Well, yeah, let me read 1 Thessalonians uh Chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. It says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Jane, we're always, we're always back to God wants to help us get through, make this stuff work. He doesn't expect us. If you get up every morning, and, oh, just perfect example, you know, New Year's resolutions. How many people stick to their New Year's resolutions? Not very many. The percentage is very small. Because they get up, they try to do, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to quit smoking. By day two, they're down at the corner buying a pack of cigarettes and doing, you know, having a smoke. No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit talking bad. Yeah, by the end of the day, they hit their thumb with a hammer and they're already talking bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? But God gives us the strength and the ability to do this stuff. So what's our part in this? And if God's doing all this, I guess I just don't do nothing, right? Let's live however I want, do whatever I want. And no, that is not what happens. That is not how it works. We have to allow him to work in us. Uh, and here I want to read Romans 6.13. It says, Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. We have to allow him to do this work in us. We can't ignore his promptings. When he asks us to do stuff, we can't ignore him. We can't push him away. If God's saying, hey, you ought to do this rather than that, 
we should do that. He gave us a conscience and he tells us what he'd like us to do. You know, so it's not like uh, you don't know what to do. You know, God will tell us what to do. And we just, he wants us to surrender to him. Don't, like I said, don't push him away. Don't ignore him. Because you push him away long enough, you know, he, he's a gentleman. He will leave you alone. Yeah, Romans 8, 13, it says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, and you will live. We need to get closer and closer to God. That's what we need to do. And if we surrender to him, he will help us get closer to him. He doesn't make us do it on our own. And when you go to bed at night and when you say your last prayer, you know, you say, God, I know I messed up today again. I'm sorry, but I want to surrender to you. When you get up in the morning, Lord, I want to be surrendered to you. Show me what I need to do. You know, the whole point of this message, and that's the conclusion of this message, it's not a very long message, but it's a very serious message, and it's very important that we're surrendered to God because that will help us make our life better. But if, you know, if we're surrendered to Him, we will become more and more like Jesus. And let me read Romans 12, 2 as a final verse. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Boy, there's a lot of stuff in this verse. You know, we all want to live like a bunch of heathens. That's just, I mean, God doesn't want that for us. He's not saying don't have fun. That is not what he is saying. You don't have to walk around with a sad face all day. And just so, you know, <laughs> you don't have to do that. But he does want us to follow him and live the way he asks us to live. And, you know, it says, uh, you know, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind how do we renew our mind? We put the stuff in our head that we need to have in there and we remind ourselves of it. And that's where, you know, me repeating some of this stuff over and over, that's where it comes in at. That way you will not forget it because you don't want to forget it. And by renewing our mind, if we know, I mean, if we renew our mind and we're focused on God, here's what happens. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, so many times, and I've said it myself, you know, man, I don't know that I'm hearing from God. Now, I've told Cece that. And you know, I've had people tell me, you know, I pray, I pray, and I pray, and I never hear from God. And it's like, okay, are you surrendered to him? Or are you just calling on him when things are bad? And then you don't hear him because, you know, if you're out there just doing your own thing and you push God away, you know, you just push him away. It's like building a wall. God's a gentleman, and he will back off. And the more you go the wrong direction, you know, after a while, he's going to go, if you're, if you're really going to go that way, okay, I'm going to let you go that way. You're not going to like what happens, but I will let you go that way. And awesome part is he allows U-turns. So when you get out there and it gets all bad and you're like, oh man, where am I at? 
You can turn around. God allows you turns. He will take you back. God will do that. So let us renew our minds and humor me the things that I repeat all the time. Just try to remember them. Put them in your head. Remember them. You know, that way, this last sentence in this last verse, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Then you'll know what God wants for you. And his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's going to be good, pleasing, and perfect. That's what his will is for us. And you will have fun. There is plenty of fun in life, even without having to go out and get drunk all the time or whatever you think might be fun. Believe it or not, when I you know, became a Christian, I figured I was going to be bored to death and I wasn't going to have a good time and all that stuff. That's wrong. I've been busier now than I've ever been. The biggest difference is when I go to bed tonight and lay down and go to sleep, I know that if for some reason I shouldn't wake up, it's all good. And I have that inner peace that I need. And if you're missing that inner peace, because you just, you know, you're just feeling like you, you, uh, it's just not going right, you need that inner peace. The first step is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Once you did that, Start renewing your mind just a little at a time. And as you do that, you renew your mind a little at a time. You'll, you'll get more and more of God and things will get continue to get better. The enemy will attack. I, we remember her just not too long ago, we you know, talked about the armor of God, how you know, we gotta have God's armor on, which is again, fits right in with this if you really think about it, you know. It's renewing our mind and we put the guard, we put the shield of faith, you know, we have it and the sword of the spirit, you know, our, to strengthen us. So again, that, you know, it fits right in with us. But the biggest thing is we got to be surrendered, which that is so hard for us to do. I'm an in charge kind of guy and I like to be in charge. And if you put God in charge, well, at some point, it can be kind of scary because you're trusting somebody else. But it's just not human nature. It just wants to be in control. <laughs> That's just, I don't know why God made us that way, but it, it has, its, has its good place. I mean, you need good managers. You need good presidents of companies. You know, you need a good president for a country. I mean, you, you need people that can take care of things and not just cave in and give in. But we need to be surrendered to God, that we do. So with that, I'd like to close. Let's pray. Our God and Father, this is totally awesome the way you do it. You know, you ask things of us and then you turn right around and tell us how we can achieve it. And if it doesn't happen, if it, we don't achieve it, we have to blame ourselves because we don't trust in you. We have to trust in you. We have to renew our mind with you to where we can just continue to get closer and closer to you, to where our life will continue to get better and better. So Father, I was asked right now that you know, if anyone out there that is struggling, is having a bad time with things, and they would just minister to them. We're not trying to talk them into anything. We just ask that you would minister to them. Send your Holy Spirit, touch their heart, draw them closer to you and just help them. Father God, as we get ready to spend the rest of our day doing whatever we do on Sunday, Lord, I just ask that you just let it be a wonderful day for each one. Just pour out a blessing on each person. Let them walk away from this from this message feeling renewed, strengthened, and with a new purpose, the renewing of their minds. So Father, thank you, and we just appreciate you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you all for coming.
And uh, next weekend is a racing weekend. We're going to be down in Merwin, Missouri. And we have a double event. We're racing on Saturday and Sunday. And church will be at 7.30 Sunday morning. I hope you can join us that early. If not, like last time, it will be on here recorded. So if, if you can't get up at 7.30, not a problem. Because it will be on here as a recording. So I hope you all have a good week. And God bless you.